Hello. Today I'm going to be playing The Witness, which is an adventure and puzzle game available on the Steam store that was developed by Jonathan Blow and his company Thecla Incorporated. So I'm on the game's Steam page here, and you can see there's some screenshots. Um, it's set on kind of a brightly colored, semi-realistic island, and I've already purchased this game, um, but you can buy it for just under $40. And I actually bought this uh, Braid Bundle, which includes his other popular game, um, which I may also try at some point. But I already have this downloaded and, and installed for this video. So continuing to the uh, About section, it says, You wake up, alone, on a strange island full of puzzles that will challenge and surprise you. You don't remember who you are, and don't remember how you got here. But there's one thing you can do. Explore the island in hopes of discovering clues, regaining your memory, and somehow finding your way home. The Witness is a single-player game in an open world with dozens of locations to explore and over 500 puzzles. This game respects you as an intelligent player, and it treats your time as precious. There's no filler. Each of those puzzles brings its own new idea into the mix, so this is a game full of ideas. Um, so I watched one of Jonathan's Blow's talks about this. Um, and essentially his idea is that he thinks a lot of games now are just kind of exploiting psychological tricks on players to make them spend more time in the game or do microtransactions and things like that that benefit the developers of the game but are kind of a huge waste of time and energy on the part of the players and they're not really getting much out of this game. So... I think his goal with this game was to do something different, like make a game that, like he says here, respects you as an intelligent player and treats your time as precious. Um, so that was part of the reason I was interested in trying to play this game. Um, so I do have a Windows computer here, and I think I have 8 gigabytes of RAM, and I have a decent uh, GPU. I think I have a RTX uh, like 3070. Um, but I have no SSD, so this may be a little bit slow to start, especially with OBS running, but hopefully it will still work. Um, so looking at Jonathan Blow's Wikipedia page here, um, so he's somewhat famous in the programming and game design communities. Um, so like I was saying this earlier, his idea about game design is that the game should kind of respect the player more and... Um, make good use of their time and give them an experience from the game that they won't re regret the time they invested uh, playing the game. Um, and then he's also famous in programming circles for his thesis that despite the widespread belief to the contrary, um, software quality is actually in decline. And I'm not sure if I 100% agree with it, um, but I do think it's pretty plausible. Um, so although computer hardware has advanced, it, the, with software it's a lot less clear, and in a lot of places software has kind of actually gotten worse. So an example would be Slack. Um, so Slack is, if you haven't used it, it's kind of like a messaging service that's often used by um, companies, like within the company. It's kind of similar to Discord. You can send messages, you can send files, pictures, you can have different channels. Um, to kind of separate out different conversations. Um, but if you use Slack, it is based on Electron, where essentially if you download the Windows app for Slack, it packages an entire web browser as part of the application, and then Slack itself is written in JavaScript. Um, so this means that they can write Slack in a cross-platform way, which definitely does have some benefits, but it also means that to start Slack, on your desktop, which is something people probably do all day, every day, if you're working in Slack, you would have to wait maybe 15 seconds for it to fully load um, for what is really a pretty basic application. It's text messages, pictures, n none of this is rocket science. And so we've kind of gotten to a place where despite all these hardware improvements, Slack and kind of similar apps like it are arguably actually worse than like IRC or some of the other things we have decades ago. Um, Slack has very little functionality that IRC or something like that doesn't, but
but it's slower, you have to pay for it, less private, and the extra features are not really clear that they're worth all of those losses. So I'll uh, get the game started now. Um, oh, I'll, also one other thing. Um, Jonathan Bolo has been working on this Jaya, Jia programming language, uh, which is a replacement for C++ uh, that I may try to do another video on if he releases more information about it. So this is my first time running The Witness, and so this is all new to me, and I may try to avoid spoilers, uh, or I'll at least try to give a warning. I'll do medium quality graphics. Jonathan Blow is also known for being a critic of RAII, um, which is actually something I probably disagree with him on. Um, I think I'm a little biased because my programming background is uh, Java, Python, and C++. So I'm really used to kind of the object-oriented model, and I think it makes a lot of sense for me. Um, so I worked for three years professionally as a C++ developer, and um, I just love smart pointers. Uh, because it lets you write very succinct C++ code that almost looks like Python code, um, but you have no garbage collector running, and it's very easy to think about when you're using the RAII idiom, and um, you kind of don't have to think about cleaning up your memory because the smart pointer deals with it when it goes out of scope. Um, although he, um, I think he said that maybe this RAII doesn't work as well for games. Um, so I've done a lot of like Qt type desktop applications and I think in that context the RAII really does make sense. Um, whereas I know he said for games you often want to do more custom memory management like um, cleaning up memory at the end of a frame and so you need more control in a way that C++ isn't convenient to do. Um, okay, so I guess we start in this tunnel. I just press space and oh, okay, controls. Um, let's do start new game. Okay, okay, so you start in this tunnel. I have to trace these lines to open the doors. I kind of like the graphics. Um, I think they do a good job of being semi-realistic, but it's not like Uncanny Valley. Um, like, it's definitely visually appealing. Um, cool. So I've got this courtyard here. I've got some sort of electrical line. Couch. Um, so my understanding is this is a puzzle game that I think revolves around these things. But I'm not exactly sure how. Though I think that's the point. I think you're supposed to figure it out. So these lines are everywhere. We've got some flowers. 
So I don't know if I should stay close to this start point or just immediately start wandering. Um, also, if I just wander and don't figure out the puzzles, I think that's probably fine too, because then there'll be no spoilers. Interesting. Um, so the ones I've done so far, which were clearly like the tutorial ones, you just had to trace the line. Um, the one in this courtyard here, there, like this one, there were kind of more options, and if I just kind of did the naive trying to get from one point to the other, that did not work. So let's see if there's anything to do here. Um, it seems hard to even get to the end point in the, the top center, but I think you can do it. There we go. So, still no. Um, what if I try to get from this one to this one? I don't see a way out. Um, I get up there. Okay, I'm just going to start trying to wander around the island. I'm not going to worry about worrying about uh, staying close here. So I think I can't go through there. Um, so I think this is my only way out of the courtyard. climb up here. Um, okay, so this one has one dot and then two of these little nubs that I think you maybe have to get through to. Um, so I've always tried going, so the tutorial you had to go starting at the circle and then end on one of the nubs. So maybe I'll try that first and then maybe the reverse. Um, Oh, and these are like lighting up like you want to get there. Okay. Oh, there we go. So I think I had to like click again while it was hovering over the nub. And then this, this thing lights up. Okay, okay. So I'm guessing if I get this nub, then this one will light up. Um, so let me see if I can see where this goes. Maybe I don't want to do both of them. Okay, so that goes outside there. Let's try to light up this cord, which goes back into the courtyard. So I want to end up here. So Okay, so I can just keep going down here.
So now this one's lit up. And this goes to the place I started. Okay, so I'm guessing to get through this door, I need to light up all three of these cords and then uncover this puzzle and then solve it. So let's follow these. Um, okay, so I have to probably light up this to get... Hmm. I wonder if, is this the, because I think the, uh, at the one puzzle I have solved, I think the, there were two uh, cords coming off, one goes to the door, and then one went over this wall, so I wonder if the one that went over this wall is then this one that comes in, and then I have to solve this to open up this terminal. So I'm going to try switching the cord that's lit up here and then try to solve that one. Okay. So then that goes out there where I can't see it. But then I think it may come back here. So no, it looks like that is not true. Um, okay, so I have no idea. So I can light up this cord here, but I have no idea where this one goes to or how to unlock the terminal there. Um, I'm going to try the third one here now. So the bottom one is the one I know how to light up. The top one is the one I can't figure out. So I'll try the middle one. Um, okay, so I tried this earlier, I think. Um, It seems like it's impossible to get past here. Okay, what about this one? Nice. So I can get this middle one and the top one. Um, and I don't think I can connect this bottom left. Um, okay. So I wonder if maybe two's enough. I'll try getting two solved and see what that does.
Okay. So... Okay, so this looks like it's going to be an easy puzzle once I have all three of them. So I just need this guy. Um, so I think when I tried this one earlier, I just didn't know I had to click when I got to the nub. So let me do that again. Okay, there we go. And then where does this go? Okay, nice, nice. Oh, that's just right here. So I missed that earlier. Okay. So I want to start. Alright, sweet. So I think that might have been the tutorial. And now I get out onto the main island. shift. Oh, shift to run. Oh, that's nice. It did feel a little slow. Okay. Okay, so this is maybe a different type of puzzle. So, maybe I do want to hit the... What if I get all of the... Little black things. Oh. Okay. So, not sure how to do this one. Uh. So I'm just going to not necessarily stay close, um, but just kind of wander around the island now. Do I need to like separate them or? Okay, so I'm gonna guess this does not work, but this does. Yep, okay. So I think this is what I needed for that puzzle I was trying a second ago. Okay, 
makes this a little harder. Um, so I think I can just go around the edge. I have to like double back. Okay. Um, will these cross? Okay, so that's illegal. Um, Okay, I'm kind of stumped on this last one. So I think all of them before I circled the white ones, but maybe I can just circle the black ones too. Oh, there we go. All right. Nice. So I'll try that puzzle I missed a second ago. Um, because I think it had the similar dynamic. What was that? I kind of forget what that was. Um, maybe I'll go try to visit the town. Oh, here it is. Okay, let's try this puzzle. Now that I know the rules. So I don't actually know what these things are for. But I now know I need to split the whites and blacks. Um, so, let's see.
not sure. I, I'll try to go through these little black uh, hexagons. Oh, and there's another start place there, too. Okay, so I think I've split them then. I think this is valid. Nope. Okay, uh, I'm gonna give up on this puzzle for now. And try to go to the town. Or I'll explore this little area. Okay. Okay, so maybe this will explain these little black hexagons. So I don't know if I want to go through them or... Okay, so I need to go through all of them. Okay, so maybe after this tutorial I'll, I'll know how to fix that, or I'll know how to solve that earlier puzzle. Um, Hmm. Okay, I'm kind of stumped on this one. Um, okay, yeah, I don't know how to solve this one. But I get the idea now. So you need to go through those little dots on the, uh, the lines. So I'll try to solve this one one more time and then keep going. So I need to split the blacks and whites here, and then go through all of these blacks. So I need to have gotten this one at the beginning. 
Wait, how is this even possible? Because I can't double up. Um, I guess, can I start here and then go through? Okay, okay, there we go. Um, Okay, that's right. Uh, I think I might have just not clicked. Okay, let me try that again. Oh, -ho, there we go. Nice. stone building with like a vault here okay no nope. um, so there's like a honeycomb pattern and then you just go across it all right I'm not really sure to, what to make of that. There's a little door for the light to come in. Alright. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna keep going along the path and see what I come across. I'll give this one more try too. This part in the top right corner is the part that I really can't figure out. Because it's really hard to get around here without doubling back somehow. Um, I don't know how you get all three of these without doubling. Um, okay, yeah, I still can't figure this out.
got some like bases here. More of these electric lines. up. Got some like burlap sacks, like cotton bags, a sand castle. So everything here is symmetrical I guess. This one's like warped. Hmm. Uh, but the warping didn't seem to really affect it. Guess it just makes it a little goofy to look at.
Um, I may stop the video here, um, but there you have it, uh, the witness.